Welcome back to the news today. This is One on One. Tonight, we host Saul Singer, co-author of the book Startup Nation, the story of Israel's economic miracle. The widely cited book examines how Israel, a 60-year-old nation with a population of 7.1 million, was able to reach such economic growth that at the start of 2009, some 63 Israeli companies were listed on the Nasdaq, more than those of any other foreign country. Good evening, Mr. Singer. Singer thank you very much for coming. Thank you. So how come such a short time, such big success? Well, that's the story of the book. That's what we were trying to explain. Uh, we thought it was a story that hadn't been told. Uh, it's a story of overcoming adversity. We're a tiny country with no resources in a bad neighborhood, and we turn that into innovation, all kinds of innovation. Uh, and there are many factors that go into it. Uh, but that's the, the story of the book. What are the main factors? The main factors maybe it's the history, it's uh, where the Jewish people are coming from, uh, let's say the Holocaust, being persecuted, being, uh, you know, under attacks from all over, the security reasons that Israel is living in. What are the main reasons for being so successful? So there are many reasons for our story, and every country has a different story, but ours is about overcoming adversity. And, and the first factor, I think, is that the whole country is a startup. It started with a crazy idea. It took a lot of drive and determination and willingness to take risk to make that idea a reality. And those two things, drive and willingness to take risk, are critical elements of entrepreneurship. So we get that from the fact that the country is a startup, we get that from the experience in the military here, which is very unique. We get that from the fact that we're a country of immigrants is a huge factor. Immigrants are risk takers. Uh, so all these things feed together uh, to produce startup nation. How does it work? You know, today we're, we're seeing that around the world, Israel will find itself sometimes being boycotted by many, many countries. And on the other hand, you will see that Israel is successful and you will hear Israeli products and you will hear Israeli made in Israel and you will hear this Israeli success all over the world. How does it work actually together? Does it work together boycotting Israel on one hand but doing business with Israel on the other hand? Well, actually, yes, it seems like two different worlds. When it comes to the conflict, Israel is very unpopular and, and, and is boycotted. But the same countries that have been boycotting Israel, where Israel's you know, not had such an easy time, I get invited to speak. I speak about startup nation. There's tremendous hunger in country after country is trying to figure out how do we get more startups? How do we become innovative? This is, this is why the book has been translated into 27 languages. It's not because they like Israel. They, they want to know this story of innovation, and they're thirsty for it. And, and these two things, the conflict and the innovation story, are completely separate which is surprising to me, but it's, it is it's what I find when of, I travel. When we're talking always here in Israel about economy, we're always connecting it to the conflict. If uh, people will have something to lose, they won't go on the street and demonstrate or go and explode themselves uh, on buses. So it's always you try to connect. But let's take it to, the, to somewhere else and let's take it to the Israelis, to the uh, people who are working in these uh, startups. Um, we are seeing, unfortunately, that um, more and more people who are building startups in Israel, they are looking for the second that someone will discover the startup and buy them and they will be rich. It seems that these startups are not, let's say, like evolving in, in Israel and they are not growing up in the benefit of Israel, but it's more of a personal benefit. Well, it may seem like that, and I think a lot of people think that way, but actually, two things. First of all, the fact that we're able to build so many startups, that we're able to have so many exits, we take that for granted. Everywhere else I go in the world, it's the exact opposite. They say, why can't we do startups? Why can't we have one exit? You know, they, they're dying to have the kind of thing that Israelis take for granted and say, why can't we build big companies? <laughs> You know, so what I find is that every country because, because, you know, like ignores the its own strengths. became the target instead of the, the startup being the target. Okay, so the, the first thing is, yes, there are a lot of exits, but those exits are getting bigger. What's happening is as our system matures, 
these entrepreneurs get more confidence and they say, I can turn down that $200 million offer or $500 million offer. Like Mark Zuckerberg turned down a billion dollars for Facebook. You have to have a lot of confidence in yourself to do that. So we're building that kind of confidence here in Israel. We're able to, to kind of wait for larger and larger exits. But still, I don't think our goal as a country should be to have a lot of big companies. We shouldn't envy, you know, we, in the book we talk about, a lot of Israelis would say, where's our Nokia? And they would, that was their image of a big company coming from a small country. Now nobody wants to be Nokia. You know, so that's Everybody not, wants to be Waze right and yeah. be uh, sold in, the, yes. in, in, in a big uh, deal. Um, you know, I'm, I'm trying to understand how come, because when we are hearing the story, and I read it a little bit from the book, um, you can imagine here that it's heaven for engineers, for people who, for high tech, for, you know, it's heaven. But you see that Israel itself find it very hard to invest in these high-tech companies in making this uh, this part of Israel flourish into a bigger uh, and more successful than it's it already is and it seems that the country is missing something because you will see a lot of people young people that are escaping from Israel mm -hmm. and saying I don't have enough opportunities here I need to go out so this Jewish mind is actually escaping from his own land and evolving somewhere else so I would say that there's two economies in Israel essentially there's high tech which is we're calling startup nation and is doing very well I think could be doing much better but it's doing very well uh, and then there's the rest of the economy, which is okay, not doing that well. And it's hard to make a living for people in the rest of the economy. So I think that we need to spread the, sex, the success, the lessons of success of the high-tech sector to the rest of eco the economy. I think we can do better on both fronts. So um, you have a chapter in the book uh, about Israeli chutzpah. And this is something that is very unique to Israelis. You, you know, when you meet someone who is really strong, really high level, uh, you know that he has big influence. Usually in Europe, people will hold themselves and be respectful and, you know, be really maintain their inner chutzpah. But Israelis now, Israelis directly come and talk and, and joke and. And it seems that it's something that people love because people don't love the distance. People wait for, let's some kind of a human touch. And it seems that Israelis has, have that. Yeah, well, the culture is extremely important for startups. And we have this culture that encourages debate, encourages questioning, it's not hierarchical, it's very informal. All these things are very good for startups. They're not so good for building big companies, which is why we're better at startups than big companies. But, um, but we need to team up, actually, with other countries that are better at things that we're not good at, and we're better at things that they're not good at. And a lot, of things, a lot of what we should be talking about here is how can we combine our strengths. That's the big theme of what I've been talking about lately, and I think it's a big part of how to bring Startup Nation to the next level. Do you think that you can connect between the two? Like, uh, like you said, it's good for small companies but it's not good when you're getting bigger maybe it's it's also relevant to the uh, political uh, side of, of Israel well this kind of thing of combining strength has actually been happening in a big way with mainly with the United States these big companies like Intel and Microsoft and Google are here what are they doing they're basically combining what big companies are good at with what startups are good at startups are great at innovation they don't know how to scale Big companies are great at scaling and they have trouble with innovation. So this kind of synergy has already been happening very much with the U.S. economy. Um, Saul, thank you very much for this fascinating, uh, fascinating conversation. And thank thank you. you for coming to our studio and good luck with the book. Uh, thank you, our viewers, for being with us tonight. Tomorrow we will be here at the same time, same place from the Jaffa Port Israel, our startup studios here, I-24 News. Have a great night.